Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. If you're like me, I love spending time outdoors. So I wanted to think about a first aid kit for an outdoorsman, a hunter, things like that. And honestly, what got this video started was a post I made on my Facebook page and my Instagram page. So if you don't follow me over there, you should go find me on one of those two platforms as well. Those were very active. Uh, about a boar um, that got a hunter um, and man his tusks are huge and he ate up this hunter right up the, the thigh inside leg and across the abdomen and so I posed the question do you carry a trauma kit while you're hunting you know we like to talk about gunshot wounds and all this nasty cool stuff on the channel but hunting accidents happen all the time and when you're out hunting you're probably not right next door to a hospital EMS station things like that so you can be by yourself for a few minutes hours or even days so if you don't have a trauma kit this is what this video is about uh, you can build your own and of course we have ours at medical gear outfitters as well uh, but this is a video to give you some ideas about what you should be carrying if you like being outdoors or you're hunting so the first thing I want to do is talk about stopping the bleeding. Keeping the red blood cells on the inside is super important. So you need a good tourniquet and your trauma kit that you're going to be taking out in the woods with you. So I don't care which tourniquet you want to talk about, the cat, the soft tee, rat, or the SWAT tee. You just need a good tourniquet that's going to go around and stop the bleeding. Now for these, I did pick orange because you're not in a tactical situation. You're not worried about people shooting back it might help if people see you. So these might actually help a little bit, you know, like the hunter orange, people see what's going on and make it a little bit easier for people to locate you and find your injuries. So in a tactical situation, we may not want you know, something bright colors, but in a hunting situation or an outdoor situation, this is gonna help people find your injuries and may even help people find you. While we're on the subject of stopping the bleeding, a good pressure bandage is gonna do wonders. If you saw that picture on Instagram or Facebook, he had a nice abdominal evisceration there. So you're gonna need something to cover that up. Uh, Elias bandage is a fantastic bandage. I've done a review on that. Israeli bandage is another bandage there. Of course, North American makes their uh, bandage as well. This is their new one. We haven't done a review on it yet on the channel, but we will. Uh, but this is their emergency trauma dressing. This is the mini version. So it's a smaller version of this bandage here. So you need a good pressure bandage there. So while we're talking about tourniquets and pressure bandage, of course, we're going to have to add some kind of gauze in there. And you could go with some five and nine, something like that. But I'm thinking that you know, like a, even a gunshot wound, accidents happen, climbing out of deer stand, you trip and fall onto a log, you got a puncture in the leg. So I'm still kind of thinking about those kind of needs here. So you could go with some compressed gauze would be absolutely perfect here. Uh, you could go with something like Quick Clot uh, Combat Gauze. This is the same packaging, uh, but this has a little bit more packaging, more gauze in this one. Uh, this is their new EMS version here. So uh, this is a little bit more affordable, guys, if you're looking for something that's got a hemostatic that's a little bit more affordable. I think I'd probably point you towards this. And of course, we know about Quick Clot the Combat Gauze here. And then of course, Sealox. Sealox is another great option here for a hemostatic agent. And we've done review on all this on the channel. So if you're looking for something particular, just go search for it in the videos and you'll find a video dedicated to each one of these. So that now that we have the ability to control major hemorrhage, there's another thing that I was thinking about. So like puncture wounds to the chest. This can be, then you get from a gunshot wound, you fell out of a deer stand, someone else shot you, they thought you were a deer. Um, you, know, you fall, a fence post goes into your chest. I mean, a number of things can cause holes in the chest. So. And likely it's gonna, percentage wise, it makes sense that it may happen to your chest. This is a lot more body surface area than our arms and our legs. Although we have major arteries that we can easily control with a good commercial tourniquet, our torso and back take up more body surface area, if that makes sense. So we want some way to be able to plug those holes. And we don't wound pack in the chest cavity, so we would seal those up with chest seals. So a commercial chest seal, such as these high fin chest seals, would work fantastic. Seal them up, you got two of them here. You can even use the packaging if you need to. So you can do a lot with this. Uh, it's vented, so it's gonna let the pressure come out of the chest, whether it be blood or air, come out. But for puncture wounds to the chest cavity and to the uh, back, we're gonna seal it up. Like I said, we don't wound pack the chest and even the abdominal area, I would probably use a pressure bandage like the Elias or Israeli or the NAR uh, pressure bandage for that. So I'm going to finish up talking about all this nasty trauma stuff. Talk about a survival blanket. These are cheap. 
but they work fantastic. Even today's weather right now, it's a little bit warmer than what we've been dealing with, but it's still quite chilly out here. So if you go into shock, you're gonna start pouring sweat, you're gonna get cool, pale, diaphoretic, and all that good stuff, and your core body temperature is gonna lower very quickly, and this can be very dangerous, can be deadly. So if we can keep you warm, that's super important to save your life. And like I said, you're out in the woods here, so you're probably not right around the corner from a hospital. So you may be out here for a few hours while EMS comes to you or we get you out of here. So keeping you warm is gonna be crucial, unless you're just a fair weather hunter like me. So let's talk about some minor boo-boo type stuff that I would probably put in my hunter's pack. So I put these in a separate Ziploc bag because these are smaller items and they can get lost. So I went in and put these in a Ziploc bag. They're nice and sealed up and ready to go. So let's open up what I put in here. So put, there's a couple band-aids I believe in here. Yep. Put some band-aids just for some minor boo-boo type stuff. There's Benadryl, aspirin, couple packs of Benadryl. Tylenol, some burn cream, some antibiotic ointment, some more aspirin. I put some bite and sting pads in here. And then I put a little pair of metal uh, stainless steel tweezers. These have the magnifying glass on it for those of you who don't have quite as young as eyes as you used to have. So some minor things that you may find, just some antibiotic ointment cuts for minor boo-boos. You've got burn cream, in case something happens, you burn yourself. And then I put a couple doses of medications in here. That same thought process that you may be out here for several hours. So you could take one round of Benadryl. A few hours later, you still haven't made it to help. You could take another dose of Benadryl for an allergic reaction. Tylenol, just because of sprains, things like that, you're gonna need them. And then aspirin. I have run several hunters who were hunting when they had a heart attack. So having aspirin even in the deer stand with you could be important and could save your life. So even while you're deer hunting, you absolutely could be having a heart attack with that chest pain you're having, and aspirin's gonna save your life. These bite and sting pads, or just like bee stings, things like that, these will work very well. I've used these on my kids, they, they love them. So now that I give you all the contents of my kit, I would tell you to probably put this in a Ziploc bag because you probably have a backpack with you that has your snack food in it, your water, your flashlight, everything like that that you're taking with you. So why not just put it in a Ziploc bag, put it down in that backpack. This is gonna be water uh, proof now, that way if something happens, it's down pouring rain, uh, you, your content is gonna stay dry. So I mean, if you wanna put this in a, a nice pouch, then go ahead. But a Ziploc bag would work fantastic for this. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you're with a first responder, bring the right gear, and the right training.